It's Derek. <laughs> and that's Noah. Oh, no. And you're listening to A Bite of. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> it's not sad. It's just Sharon. She's no. just trying to tell everyone. Now we will never forget her name. They, they in did. death. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, spoilers. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Coming out the gate hot <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the spoilers. Yes, um, I don't know what mulberries taste like, so I would have been just out of luck. Same with Sharon. <laughs> I will say that a little over a year ago, I made us mulberry muffins, but it's fine. So on this episode... <laughs> of a bite of we're, <laughs> we're on episode three of agatha all along um we're trucking along we're on the witch's road this is the first episode fully in the witch's road um very excited to talk about this i mm. feel like we are getting in that spooky season <gasps> oh i'm excited um patreon we have that like the show support the show keep the lights and mics on feed your gay creators <laughs> us <laughs> discord we do have an agatha coven discord channel so all the spoiler free chat have fun that thing's have been popping fun. off it's been popping off um also follow us on socials you know, all of the social media platforms you'll see us there you'll see um reels and fun things that we make and just our normal lives all of that great stuff everybody knows how this works okay make sure you leave a review do some comments leave um stars all of that i just like you know you guys know what to do they're, they don't even, they're not even listening to this because they hit fast forward, fast forward, yeah. fast forward. <laughs> but if you're new here, hi, welcome. Do all of yes. those things because you're amazing and beautiful. All right, witches. Spoiler alert ahead. We do not want your cauldron to burn your po- potions. Potions. Burn your potions. <laughs> burn your potions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let us officially take a bite of Agatha all along episode three through many miles of tricks and trials directed by Rachel Goldberg and written by Cameron Squires, Jack Schaefer, and Jason Rostovsky. The coven clutches their cardigans as their first trial captures them in a cavernous mansion on a cape. The witches waste no time for wine, but alas, it is a perilous poison. Swelling and yelling and hallucinations try to trick them. They must work together to ward off the effects of the terrible tincture while time of three tens ticks. Whoa. Yay, the wordplay is back. Wordplay is back. I love it. Good job. Um, Ticture. That's always what I love that word. I don't know why. For the longest time, I didn't know what it meant. Anyway. It's a good uh, word. Let me tell you something. Thesaurus, love her. Synonyms, (laughs) let's go. I said, what's another word for poison? They said tincture. I said, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) And then you have to look for other T words. Exactly. Terrible tincture while time of three tins ticks. (gasps) Love it. Um, okay, so what'd you think? What'd you think of episode three of Agatha All Along? We are three, a quarter of the way through the, I think, limited series. Except, I would say, except for the last moment. This was F-U-N. Fun. I had a great time. I thought the costuming was hilarious. The practical makeup was fantastic. Seeing them all work together for the first time, the coven's coming together, people. Mm. It was just 10 out of 10, wow. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what you think. <laughs> You're asking me. This is your thought. I'm saying, like, don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. I liked it a lot. I think it was a good first introduction to the trials and seeing what it's going to be about. Obviously, we have lots to say about this, I would say, Jen more focused trial um, and what we can expect from, from the road, the journey ahead. Um, I really liked it. They're not to start it off with a critique, Oof. but my only critique is, and this is a Marvel show, right? And part of our job, but then in quotes, is to look at like the little things and kind of put them together and everything. And as viewers, they do that too. I, there's a lot of mystery. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. And like everybody has mystery. So it, it's just a lot. It's a lot of mystery. So it's like, okay, we're three episodes in. I know we have like six episodes left, but they do go by pretty fast. And it's a lot of mystery to get through. So I'm curious to see how the balance continues to go of like giving us some of those answers while still holding some of that mystery. Or is it going to be like flashback episode and then we get all the 
the stuff, right? Because Agatha through this whole thing, and I have a lot of thoughts about her in this episode, is she's just holding everything close to her chest. It's mm. not even like us as viewers know anything. We know nothing. Mm-hmm. So it is interesting to see the main character. We know nothing about her. And mm-hmm. then everybody else. Still, we don't know anything about them. Um, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just cautiously like, okay, how much more mystery? Because this episode just like more, more mystery, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm balanced. I yep. mean, I I think that this episode had a job to do. I think not only was it the first trial, but it had to sort of tell us the rules of everything, right? And I feel like our first couple of minutes are learning those rules, right? The first one that we know is like, now we know, okay, you can't step off the road, right? Because Mrs. Hart almost sinks. But we also learn that because they're saying to Agatha, like, what happens down here? And she tells them it's the trials. And basically, it'll be a trial for each of them. And so, okay, good. We got that. Now we know. And this was Jennifer's trial, pretty much, right? The trial for the potion witch. And so now we also took this episode to learn. I mean, if we can even call it learning, but see a glimpse of what they've all been through. And so now everyone's little backstory has been set up and we're learning from here on out. Right, right. And I, it's like dipping our toes into like, mm. this is like some of the stuff. But again, it was like hallucinations, right? And it was so quick that it's like, okay, now I have questions. Like, what is the curse? Like, who were those women that Lilia saw? What are the permanent? Like, it's just like adds more to it, which again, not complaining. That's the point, baby. Right. That's the point. <laughs> but it's like, oh, this is a lot of mystery that they're like stuffing into this. And I'm kind of curious, is it just because like, again, it's a Marvel show, but it's like, there's nine episodes and in a normal season, I say normal, like when we used to have 16 or 22 episodes, maybe it wouldn't have been so compressed, but because we have two compressed episodes, it just seems like a lot of mystery. But anyway, I want to like move past that because I I don't want to say it's a huge criticism. It's just something that I'm noticing. Um, Is it because the mysteries just drive you bonkers? Yes, I'm going insane. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, One of the, speaking of mysteries, one of the things that we do kind of get an answer to ish is before they get to their first trial and everybody's figuring everything out and mrs hart is just like this is a kidnapping <laughs> which mvp of this episode amazing deborah joe rupp chef's kiss amazing but lilia or the the rest of the witches see that there is a sigil which now we know that's what it's called mm. on teen so yes. they're not able to say their name or anything about them to which kind Which is interesting because Sharon was there. And if we're going to go on the theory of her not being a witch so far, right? Why didn't she say anything? Okay, I will say she wasn't. She was. I looked out for it the second time we watched it. I swear to God, if you watch it just just before Agatha goes to tell everybody, like, this is why you're here. That's when she disappears. Mm. But like, even when he says the name, because it does go to the witches like twice, you can see her arm still Mm. in the shot and i don't know if that was a mistake you know but you can tell that she's there because initially when i first watched it i was like oh she's not there like it explains like why she walked away right but she was there so i'm like hmm interesting Mm. like she just let all of these people be like well i heard the name and so that made me think like okay if a, a pedestrian could hear his his name or anything about him would they then be sigiled to all of witches like they couldn't telephone the name so i'm just curious right like that's what i was thinking oh they magically made her go off the screen but she was there so i'm just like Mm. i'll I'll put that little scene in this part when we're talking about it show us her arm yeah i mean she was there (laughs) i went along with the fact that she was wandering off and i'm like okay because i had thought the same thing i was like too bad sharon wasn't there because she could have said oh his name is right whatever so it would have been squiggled Mm, squiggled indeed i did do a little research on what a sigil is Mm -hmm. and so i mean this is according to wikipedia but a sigil is a type of symbol used in magic the term usually refers to a pictorial signature of a spirit such as an angel demon or deity in (laughs) modern usage especially in the context of chaos magic chaos (laughs) magic (laughs) a sigil refers to a symbolic representation of the practitioner's desired outcome So I did a little more research and I got to like a sort of witchy website. And basically what you do is you say your intention and then you kind of boil it down to like the smallest thing. And then when you write it, you remove all the vowels and then you connect 
the rest Everything of the together. consonants together. And then that's what makes the pattern. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was really <sighs> cool. So, of course, I was staring at the picture. It, it looks like either a W or an M, but obviously that wouldn't be what the spell is. But it just looks like either Wanda or Maximoff. Mephisto. Maximoff. Oh, that too. Also, if it's a W, Wiccan. <laughs> But also his name is Billy. So yeah. it, if it is Wiccan. So I yeah, ooh, that's really interesting. On that same note, we will get into the Mephisto of it all. Finally vindicated years later, ah, Mephisto I, was mentioned. Right. And this like officially cements that Mephisto exists in and that's the MCU. Important. I think that's important. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's just talk about Mephisto now, right? Yeah. I, I'm sure like a lot of people might have clicked on this to be like, what are they going to say about Mephisto? Let's get it out of here, right? Everything. <laughs> so when Jen tells teen Mephisto, right? She's like, Agatha sold her son for the Darkhold. She, she's like saying rumor. She does seem a little, I don't want to say gossipy, but kind of, right? It's not with bad intentions because it's agatha right but also what is her goal here maybe she's trying to look out for him maybe she's trying to figure things out because there's a mystery behind him mm. um but with mephisto being mentioned i did go <gasps> finally <laughs> i felt this weight just be lifted off of my shoulders um because both of us were theorizing mephisto and then loki didn't help with the imagery of the devil and all of that so Finally, right? It's mm -hmm. like we know he does exist. There's been rumors that he might be an iron heart. So yeah, we we have a we have a little bit of an answer that yes. Mephisto exists in here. He's possibly here. What did you how did you feel about Mephisto being mentioned? Do you think he's actually going to play a part in Agatha or is it a red herring? So I think in watching years of these Marvel series now, I don't get my hopes up for anything. And so it, we always bring it up. It's being bonered, right? We're going to get, it just feels like we're going to get fistoed, you know? <laughs> no. So, so I don't want that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that I, I'm just going to play it cool. We are future <laughs> retroactively being demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I mean, you can take what you want from my words. Wait, I said what I said. Say it again. Fistoed. Why? Why did you put an F? Because it's Mephisto. <laughs> but it, never mind. And I Spelling think, here. No, I'm just I think Fistoed <laughs> maybe gives a certain connotation like Bonard. <laughs> Yo. Thing. All right. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think he'll be here. Yeah. How I, about you? I don't. I, and, I, and it's not because I don't want Mephisto to be here. Um, but I know... I've learned lessons from WandaVision, right? I think all of us collectively need to learn lessons from WandaVision. That's life. Right. And I just don't think that we need Mephisto mm. for this story. Like maybe later on, but same thing with WandaVision. I don't, I feel like WandaVision in the end for what it was, didn't need Mephisto and we didn't get it. Right. So I don't know. It's like, we don't need it. And it does sort of feel like in these Marvel series, they don't do big, big bads, you know? So like to bring a big, big bad, that would be, I mean, that would be badass, but it feels like they don't do that. Yeah. Well, cause most of the time it's like a one and done. Right. Um, and occasionally you'll get ones that do show up or turn into different things, um, or become internet cessations like Baron Zemo. But, um, that is my worry. Like once they introduce somebody like that, because it is an entity in a way, like you can banish or get rid of them but like not really so mm -hmm. what is that going to look like when mephisto is finally introduced um i will say though before we get off of being fistoed <laughs> in this particular part um in the comics so when billy and tommy disappear in the comics house of m everything like that mephisto actually reclaims their souls and then wanda goes and like banishes it, all that stuff and they get reborn that's how that's why billy kaplan is billy kaplan he's the son of jeff and rebecca kaplan mm. he was reborn into this other person um it's not until they become a young avenger and everything and grow up and meet scarlet witch that then it becomes apparent oh you are my son and all of that stuff beautiful um I think there's a question there to be had of like, 
could, <laughs> this is a big if, right? This is the big theory that I'll say for this episode with Wiccan or Billy or Nicholas Scratch is he says in this episode when he's talking to um, one of the witches, oh God, I, I keep, I, Alice. Alice, Alice, geez, I keep wanting to say their actual names. Yeah. I'm like, that's not their name. Um, so when he's talking to Alice, she says that she got the tattoo when she was 13 because her mother was wanted to protect her and everything. And he says that happened to me too. That was three years ago. Cause he's 16 at the current time of the show from what he has said. So three years ago, there was an accident, a near death accident in Westview. We seen that in the credits. There's a newspaper clipping. Is it possible? This is what I'm just going to say that is this the body of Agatha's kid? Nicholas Scratch, but Billy inside of it. So then that would connect Agatha and Wanda a little more. I know that sounds really far out there. That's like my craziest theory, but like the soul, like near death happened. Nicholas Scratch died in a way. And then Billy went in there, but that's why they don't have any memories. I don't know. Mm. I'm just like trying to put these pieces together and see how they can connect. And that seems wild. You but. can't force puzzle pieces. <laughs> To come together, Noah. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. Um, I mean, that's my theory. Yeah. But, you know. Why not? Throw it out there. Let's Why put not? it in the universe. See what happens. At this point, I can say anything. And hopefully, at the end, I could be like, ha. <laughs> I think Lilia is his mother. No. No, no that's a lie. Whoa. I do want, so let's take a step back. What did you think of the setting of this trial? Yo, Derek said, okay, crazy person, let's go. <laughs> well, I think that that's enough Mephisto yeah. for this episode. All right, I'll stop fisting. <laughs> Some of us just do a fun play on words. Others do not. <laughs> Moving on, the setting. <laughs> the setting I liked a lot, right? It's the big little lies. It's the desperate housewives. It's Jennifer Kale. It's mm -hmm. like her worst nightmare. It's her clientele, right? right? And so, like you were saying earlier, it does seem like all of them are going to go through the trials, right? Because they're the coven. But each one is going to be more particular that person's trial. Because if, I mean, right when they got there, it was just like, oh, this is like straight out of your catalog, Jen. Agatha clocked it right away. Yeah. So it was really interesting to see this be Jen's episode. But also it focused on Sharon a lot. It was, it was an interesting balance between the two. Yeah. Um, I loved it. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it was cool because it's almost like a test of each of their powers. Right. And them coming into their true power whether or not they technically have the magic anymore you know and so it is sort of that believe in yourself you can do it moment uh, and i love this setting as well i think it was so so different you know because we were in we were in westview which is like suburbia and then we're down on the witch's road which is creepy and dark and then we're blasted into the seaside grace and frankie you know ladies who lunch moment it, it, yeah it, it very much looked like you know i kept saying like oh it's like grace and frankie and it's like well that's not really like the vibe they're trying to go for but it looked it felt like it but i think it's just like women that drink wine yeah. and stuff happens yes exactly <laughs> and also teen said something like oh it's like second chance at love which is grace and frankie which is desperate housewives which is all, all of them yeah <laughs> So <laughs> big little eyes. We got what they were doing with yeah. this one for sure. I really liked it. And then the added thing of like them being underwater, salt water and everything. There's a the whole thing with witches and on consecrated ground and salt and all of that. Um, so there's a bunch of layers to that. But I am very like, I feel like a lot of the conversation, rightfully so, is on Agatha and is on Sharon and stuff. But I think like Jen has a lot going on in this episode. Mm -hmm. And it's bizarre. Like if we just think about it, right? So when they all do get the, the alewives revenge and they all get poisoned, they see hallucinations. And that's when we start seeing some of their pasts and everything. Is it fully true? I don't know. We just have to believe it. But the fact that Jen is seeing this doctor, clearly not of this time, mm -hmm. I would say of like a snake oil salesperson's time. Mm. Um, why? Like what situation would she be in with medicine? Because she is a woman of color, what situation would she be in with that person? And, you know, somebody that's saying you're an inconvenience and you're useless and now, you know, trying to kill her, which is crazy. But like, I'm really curious on what that is, because she says that he took my magic. Whoever bound her, was it this person mm -hmm. or 
somebody else with a name with an M. <laughs> that <laughs> guy will be Mephisto, that actor. Right. Yeah, I, the, the thing that I'm piecing together, so this is my fake story that I made up <laughs> uh-huh. from this, is that at, at one point in time, Jen was working with this man in that very much tincture way mm-hmm. of creating like, you know, Coca-Cola and they're like, it's medicine. And they were working together and then he was taking advantage of her and take, and then he wanted her power. So he did something to her to steal her magic. Mm. And the, but the inconvenient woman thing, that's interesting. Why is she inconvenient? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of mystery behind that. Um, and I feel like, yeah, I mean, I'm excited, kind of not just because he was very terrifying and I didn't like how he treated her. Um, but I'm really curious to find out more. And that's the thing with these witches, right? Is that they're older than they seem. And I, I forgot about that, but I like this reminder, especially seeing them like, you know, we see Lilia when she's much younger, um, who I'm assuming is Lilia. Like she sees herself right. and then she sees what, who I'm assuming is a mother. And then this figure of like death, death. um, so it might have been the multi-generation or something, but you can tell she's definitely older. Right. We, <laughs> we learned that when they first meet her, right? That right. she's hundreds and hundreds of years old. And it was sad, though, that moment after she has her hallucination, because it's a reminder of how long, how much longer she has lived than everyone else that was important mm-hmm. in her life. And what's really interesting about that, and this leads back into Agatha, because we have so many questions about her in this episode. Is she's like, they're dead. They're all dead. Um, I think she, does she say it in Latin? I be, I think is she speaking I Latin? I think so. I, could, I very much could be wrong. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and Agatha, instead of being like, what are you talking about? Or you're going crazy. She's, she's like, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Like there is that very motherly side of Agatha. You know, there's something that's, yes. And I think that's what makes Agatha, I think throughout these years prior to her being in the MCU, which makes her very interesting because she is a complicated character. She's a nanny. She's a mentor. She's a big bad. She's not, she's helps. And she has all these layers. I think we and the MCU are still trying to put her in a place, right? And like trying to figure her out. And I think with seeing this, it does seem like she does have this long history at least with some of these members. And it seems like the most with Rio and Lilia out of everybody. Um, so I'm curious. I'm curious to see like what that is. And her vision made me think of the triple head goddess, the, the triple goddess. Um, you know, you have the, the, the maiden, the mother and the crone. And we saw these three different figures and mm. that's who's on her little pendant, her, mm. her brooch. So I don't know. It's just like interesting layers going on with yeah. this it's like threes and like she saw the things that's like on her locket and like there's a hair in the locket there's joe lock he's in the show <laughs> yeah it's his hair hair is a rabbit See? rabbit is senior scratchy this is scratch oh my god <laughs> we figured we it solved out. it <laughs> we solved it this is again why i'm just like there's so much mystery in the show and i just feel like my brain is loud <laughs> i think this early on though i'm loving that right i'm personally liking it because it's setting up each of their little mysteries so that as the episodes go on, we can go, oh, that's what that was. Because I do think with maybe not Agatha, but the rest of them, they are going to fill in these gaps right. for us right. as we all go down the road together. Let's, so let's, let's go over their, their um, the Ale's, Alewife's Revenge makes them <laughs> blow up, right? I can't remember who said it, but I did see online it was like a convention of Jennifer Coolidge's. <laughs> totally. And I was like, oh, <laughs> um, hilarious. It was so much yes. fun. Like the fact that they did all this practical ma- magic, all of this practical. Oh my God, it's practical magic season. Yeah. <laughs> all of these practical effects for this gag is amazing. And I think that's like why people are drawn to this type of thing, because it's like they will go that extra mile. Jack Schaefer and team will go that extra mile to do that um, because it's a lot of fun. And I, who, who doesn't want to see Deborah Joe Rupp? Try to say, like, I don't know any of these things that you're saying while just blown yes. up. Yes. <laughs> I do love all of the behind the scenes photos of them seeing each other in the makeup and just like laughing hysterically. I'm very much looking forward to the making of Agatha all along. Oh, that's going to be so much yeah, fun. That'll be really fun. I, of course, I have to put this in there. Their faces did give me the feeling of the Twilight Zone episode, The Masks. Oh, yeah. So, and especially the way that. Uh, Zashir Zameda, Jennifer looks in the mirror and touches her face. That's what they do in that episode when all their faces have transformed. Right. 
So, Mm -hmm. you know, I always like to bring up my little Twilight Zone when I can. I would love to know if the makeup artist was just like, yeah, I want to make him kind of look like this. I mean, obviously it looks like exaggerated, like plastic surgery, but it does look like that. Something else to bring up in this scene in particular, because this is, I think the first time it happens in the episode is Lilia is saying bizarre things. Yes. So in this particular one, she just says something like, I love all you guys. Yeah, she says, uh, yeah, she says, I love you guys. I love you guys. That's all she says. And they're all like, what? She's like, what? They just glance right over. Yeah. Yeah. And then she does say the thing of um, try to save Agatha when they're looking at the at the products in the bathroom. It's interesting. And Agatha's like, OK, I like that plan. That's great. But I, you know, you had said, is she having a vision? And that makes so much sense. And to me, what I'm thinking is that she's seeing some sort of final moment, you know, and in my mind, she's she's dying and no. she's saying, I love all you guys. You know, this is at the end of their journey. They've grown so much closer together. They've worked together. And then she says, but you have to save Agatha. Patty Lapone cannot die in this series because we'll riot. <laughs> I am I am terrified, right? I'm, I'm terrified to see. I hope all of these people make it out. But. After this episode and what happened to Sharon, mm, I don't know. Yeah, might not happen. Yeah, but it is interesting. So I think we need to be a little more open-eared mm. with with her because she says it so quickly. We had to rewind it and I was like, what did she say? And she's not doing the full convulsion thing. And that they're she also did. not reacting mm. like big to it. So yeah, we definitely have to we have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, when you're when the clock is counting down and you're dying from poison you don't have time to think about why that lady said that thing <laughs> yeah that's why Agatha was like okay cool yes let's do that but like let's keep doing what we're doing exactly um so all of their visions right so we had we had jen she saw the doctor that was trying to kill her we had um alice who saw her mother mm-hmm. which she said that her her grandmother had died thousand miles away and she saw her we know there's there's a curse on her family or that's what her mother has said and that's why she has the tattoo that's interesting is the curse like like an actual curse like a demon or something like that or is it more like alcohol or drugs or something Mm. like that who knows um and then who else do we have we have uh, lilia who saw i'm assuming herself her mother and her grandmother and then we have agatha (sighs) this one's interesting Ooh, talk about great performance she had to go from like joking around having all this stuff on her face to not only the entire scene the lighting change but then just like acting yeah (laughs) you know terrifying i didn't know what we were going to see in that cradle but the fact that it's the dark hold and she reacted that way is very interesting yeah how did she get the dark hold so the when we think of agatha as a character again she holds so much of what she's been through from anyone like Doesn't you say. said before from Any- them and from us the audience and so this decision that jennifer says she made to basically trade her son for the dark hold still haunts her mm. every day she lives with that guilt but what would bring someone to make such a decision you know it's it's interesting so the agatha of it all in this episode she was so weird she was so weird in this episode. She acted bizarre. I'm thinking back to when Rio first, their first interaction, their fight, um, or when they first met. I can't remember exactly, but she says something like, do you remember why you hate me? Mm. That made me think of, obviously, she did something to Agatha. Did Rio sacrifice her son to get the dark hold? And then Agatha got it from Rio? Mm. That's a theory I have. Um, did she actually sacrifice her son because of the way that she acts and how protective she is of teen because i don't think she knows if teen is really she might think that teen is nicholas scratch which makes me think it's a red herring and he's completely different um i don't know like is the hair in the locket from her son how old was the kid when it was sacrificed because that looked like a baby hmm? bassinet well i'm saying the lock of hair looked oh. like an older child so Mm -hmm. unless i had a full head of hair (laughs) that's one that magical baby yeah so this is my i'm gonna throw i think i might have said something like this in our last episode but teen knows so much Hmm. he just knows what things are he has all the answers for things i again think that maybe 
Teen is the embodiment of the Darkhold. Yeah. Yeah. That's remember. Was that, that what I said the last episode? I said something like that. That's something that I, well, I think we both did. Mm. Um, but that was my two theories in the beginning of like, it's either Billy or Nicholas Scratch or a human version of the Darkhold. Because yeah. that's what's currently happening because in the comics. He just knows too much. Right. And the fact that when she looked, instead of seeing a baby, she saw a book. I think he's a walking book. Well, right. <laughs> but yeah. who's Boyf? That's the question. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we can believe anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially from him. He does know a lot. Um, do you, so you're saying it's more of like he knows more or maybe doesn't know more what's happening, like kind of like Wanda, or he's like the old man from Squid Game. Like he that. is the orchestrator of a lot of things and yeah. he's just playing along. Because it's weird because he's with witches who are hundreds of years old and he knows answers to things. He's explaining things to them, Yeah, which I think is interesting. It's very interesting. I also, um, big thing, I big theory that I think is now proving more true for me personally is Agatha has never been on the road before. Mm. She is not acting like somebody that has been there before. Yeah, because, why wouldn't she drink the poison? Well, and why is she acting like she doesn't really know what's happening? Granted, the trials do change with the coven, but she didn't say anything about staying on the road. She only said that after it was obvious because when she was like, Rule number one is stay on the road. Like, don't stray from the path. And even Sharon was like, well, duh. Like, yeah, I did that. And then Alice even says it's all in the song. It's right. in the ballad. Right. So anybody who just knows the lyrics to the ballad knows the rules of the witch's road. Right. And she's just doing things. She's acting. She's kind of more observing than leading, which she should be leading. Right. Somebody that has done this before. I think it's going to come into question. Either she has been on the road before and she cheated. Because she does seem like somebody that would cheat or she's never been on the road before. Because even I just keep going back to like why the opening to the road didn't happen. Granted, Agatha could have said that because maybe she didn't expect it to open because she's never been there before. And it only opened when true witches, the Salem Seven, actually came down to that room and then it opened. I don't maybe, know. maybe it's also something like so in this when they're finally brewing the potion. They need to hold hands and have like the same intention. And in that beginning moment, she really didn't want to go down the witch's road. She just wanted someone to blast her so she could steal their powers. And it wasn't until the Salem Seven came that she finally had the same intention of we need to get Escape. out of here. Yeah. Right. And that's why it opened. Yeah. I think there's, yeah, I think we're, we're close to something. Like, I feel like it's like a, like a metal detector and we're just like, deet, 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 yeah, yeah. Deet. Like, we're not ready to dig in the sand yet, but almost <laughs> we're getting close. Yeah. Oh. It is, I do love these early episodes because like before it gets too complicated, like, I mean, the world is our oyster here. We can just theorize. I need to know listeners, viewers, if you're watching this on YouTube or watching, listening to us, please let us know what you think. That is like one of the best parts about this is just like, what theories do you have? Yeah. So crazy. We're all little Marvel scientists. So we have to throw out our hypotheses yeah. <laughs> and just see which ones stick. Do you have, um, before we get to kind of the end of this episode do you have a favorite moment from this episode i think my favorite moment actually was the lilia hallucination mm -hmm. i just thought that patty Lip i mean it's patty lapone she just did an incredible job in that moment and it was so short and i just thought we got to see a different dynamic of agatha so that just struck me that stayed with me it was so sad that it really stayed with me Mine is similar where we got to see a different side of Agatha and it's when um, she goes to Jen and she does the mentoring thing because when Jen is second guessing herself and she doesn't have her magic and she can't just wave her hands and make it happen, she's panicking. And granted, the time is literally down to a minute, but Agatha takes that moment to be the leader who she should be and mentors her. She's like, they might be able to take your magic, but they can't take your knowledge. And Jen's like, yeah. <laughs> i got it now you're right <laughs> they can't <laughs> hair um <laughs> speaking of hair i can't believe all of these witches and teen did not think to take a piece of sharon's hair that's why it didn't work it didn't work because they didn't take her hair everybody else's hair like <laughs> they're so selfish man it's so sad i don't think she's dead even though she looked really dead Really dead, but it was so unserious. It was so unserious with Agatha being like, who's Sharon? And granted, that is Agatha, but it just, 
I don't know. I don't trust anything in the show this early on. And, I, you know, you have to wonder, like, are things that happen on the witch's road final? Right. Is she just going to, like, shoot back up? Right. Especially if you're a human, you don't really have any magical properties. Like, she shouldn't have been there anyway. Mm. I don't know. We also, speaking of Sharon, we didn't talk about her vision or supposed vision. Oh, that was sad. Yeah. And it seems like when she was like, Wanda... Like, what did she say? She said something about, She said, like, let him breathe. Let him breathe. So it, it does seem like that is what she actually wanted to say at that dinner in the first episode of WandaVision, but she couldn't, and all she said was, stop it. Yeah. Oh, but it was interesting. We didn't see what she saw. I don't know. I don't trust things when it's like you see everything else, but you don't see hers. I mean, do you think she's a liar? Do you think she's playing games with the witches? Or somebody else is playing games mm. via through her. Is Rio using her as a puppet? Could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's weird that Mr. Hart's dead. That just like came out of Davis. Yeah. (laughs) Well, they call her Mr. Mrs. Hart, (laughs) so I'm going to keep saying it. Um, And then she dies. Eh, It's interesting. It's very interesting. Wanda, you got a lot of blood on your hands, baby. Mm. Got a lot of blood on your (laughs) hands. God. So I think that's like that's all the thoughts I have for this episode. Obviously, I have a million more, but like I don't want to keep screaming at you guys. In a very docile tone, <laughs> screaming. But it's like, you know, we got our first trials. I'm so excited to see whose trial is next. What comes next? Um, Agatha's acting weird. Teen mystery, still a Bruin. When's Rio coming back? I hope she comes back the next episode. Me too. I need more Aubrey Plaza. I also need that part that they keep showing where Agatha is like doing a bridge and crawling around. She's like, you're right, girl. Or <laughs> whatever she said. And I love it's going towards teen and he's like, oh. <laughs> oh i'm so excited we still have so much yeah. so much um forewarning so not forewarning but we have um some exciting things coming up we have um heartstopper season three um we will be dropping that episode next week i can't wait um and then agatha episode four so you're getting a double dose of a bite of next week two bites Double dose of Joe Locke. <laughs> That's <week>. true. <laughs> he he owns right the, now. He has he has a very high uh, shareholder yeah. stake in, in the bite of right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Let us know what you thought of the episode of our faces. Um, I hope you have a wonderful spooky season. Next time you just see us, it will be full on October. <sighs> oh. Off with your head. Yeah. I'm singing the music in my head. Dance till you dance. <laughs> so, till next time. Bye. Bye.